I've been documenting my build and made a pretty in-depth guide to assembling a K-series motor. That content was pretty long and dry, so I'm packing the info into a shorter video to accommodate your short attention span. I'm also going to address the question that everybody asked me that I've been avoiding for a couple of years now. The total cost. I dug through my billing statements, and I'm going to tally up the total cost of this build to really give a reason for my girlfriend to leave me. The cost will be broken down into parts, and the special tools I needed to buy to achieve the build. So let's start breaking it down. To start, I found junk K24 and K20 motors I was going to use for a Frankenstein build. Sending it to the machine shop to be cleaned up and machine brought the total cost over $2100 before we even start assembling. I'll continue to tally up the cost as we assemble and try to avoid spiraling into depression. First we start by cleaning the oil passages and bearing journals on the crankshaft. Next we clean the bearing saddles and the bearings themselves. The bearings have a tang that will dictate the orientation that they go in. Now repeat the same process on the engine girdle. Clean the mating surface and carefully drop the crankshaft in place. Put a piece of plastic gauge on each bearing journal, place the girdle on top, and carefully torque down the girdle to the manufacturer's spec and pattern. Do not let the crankshaft spin since there's no lubrication. Now bolt the block, check the plastic gauge, and see if your desired oil clearance was achieved. Give the mating surface another cleaning and install the rear main seal on the crankshaft. Apply Honda Bond to the surface per the manufacturer's instructions. Apply assembly loop to the thrust washers and place them in the block. Apply plenty of assembly lube to avoid metal on metal contact and place the crankshaft. Retorque the engine girdle to spec and turn the crankshaft to make sure there's no resistance. Pry on the crankshaft to make sure your thrust clearances are within the manufacturer's spec. Double check that you don't have too much squeeze out from the Honda Bond. On to the pistons. Separate all your piston rings into specific groups for each cylinder. Clean your cylinder walls and leave a small mark on your piston rings to keep track of which cylinder they're gapped for. Place the ring in the cylinder, use the piston to align it, and check the gap with feeler gauges. Carefully grind the ring down until you reach the gap recommended by the piston manufacturer. Take your entire piston assembly and weigh each part. Use the known weights to balance the assemblies the best you can. Then to get a perfect match, grind down parts of the wrist pin. Take your piston, clean out the ring grooves, and begin installing the piston rings in the order specified by the manufacturer. Install one of the wrist pin clips, apply lubrication, and install the wrist pin. Clean and install the connecting rod. Install the second wrist pin clip, clean the connecting rod bearings and surfaces, and then install them. The bearings again have a tang to ensure proper orientation. Clean the cylinder wall and the connecting rod bearing journal on the crankshaft. Clock your piston rings to the manufacturer's recommended orientation. Apply some oil to the piston, piston ring compressor, and cylinder walls. Turn the crankshaft to bottom dead center and insert the piston, lightly tap it into place. With the piston inside the cylinder, carefully mate it to the crankshaft. Place a piece of plastic gauge and begin to torque down the rod ends to the manufacturer's spec. Remove the rod end and check the compression of the plastic gauge to see if you have your desired oil clearance. Apply assembly lube on all sides of the crankshaft bearing journal and torque down the two bolts to spec. Repeat for all cylinders and turn the crankshaft to make sure it turns with no resistance. Clean your head studs and the mating surfaces on the cylinder head and engine block. Put in the head studs hand tight and the two dowel pins and head gasket. Carefully align your cylinder head and place it on the engine block. Apply thread lubrication to the washers and nuts for the head studs and then torque it in the proper sequence. Clean the mating surface and apply Honda Bond for your cam rockers. Tap the cam rockers to fully seat them and apply assembly lube to them. Carefully place your cams. You may need to change the orientation for them based on where your cam lobes are. Take each cam cap and apply assembly lube. Each cam cap is numbered dictating where it goes. Torque the cam caps in the recommended sequence into the correct spec. If building a K24 with a K20 oil pump, you'll need to remove an oil jet, tap and plug the hole to achieve the correct oil pressure. Place the oil baffle and torque it to the correct spec. Place your oil pump on top of the baffle. Install the crank gear and install the oil pump chain. There's no interference so don't worry about orientation of the gears. With the chain installed, torque the oil pump down to the recommended spec. Place the oil chain guide and the optional timing chain guide. Don't torque it down yet. Install the oil chain tensioner and torque it down to the recommended spec. Turn the crankshaft until the markings line up. On top, turn the camshafts until the markings and the gears line up as shown. Lock the cams in place on the backside of the motor using the provisions made. Place the timing chain on the cam gears aligning the marked chain links and the marks on the gears. Use the top timing guide to help keep it in place. Make sure the marked link on the timing chain is aligned with the mark on the crank gear. Once everything is aligned, torque down the timing chain guide. Install the main timing chain guides and torque them to the recommended spec. Double check that all the markings are still aligned. Place the chain tensioner, torque it down, and pull the pin to release the tension. Rotate the crankshaft a couple of times to make sure there's no interference or resistance and that the rotation is smooth. Place the crank timing gear, paying attention to the engraving, and install the lock on the keyway. 
Apply some oil to the rear main seal and install it to the timing chain cover. Clean the mating surface of the timing chain cover. Install Honda Bond on the recommended surfaces. Install the required gaskets. Place the timing chain cover on the block and torque it to the recommended spec in the correct sequence. Clean the mating surface of the oil pan and apply Honda Bond. Clean the mating surface on the engine block and place the oil pan. Torque it down to the recommended spec. Clean the timing chain tensioner cover, apply Honda Bond, and torque it down. Clean the mating surfaces for the water pump housing, install the gasket, apply Honda Bond to the recommended surfaces, and install it to the engine block, torque it to spec. Repeat the same for the water pump. Clean the surface, place the gasket, and torque the water pump to the recommended spec. Clean the oil filter housing, install the gasket on the oil cooler, and torque it to the required spec. I'm running the K20 oil cooler on a K24 block which requires some unique steps. Remove the coolant plug and install the adapter. Install the coolant port on the water pump and torque it down. Route the coolant lines for the oil cooler and the water pump. Install the crank position sensor, VTEC solenoid valve, VTC oil control valve. Install the VTC oil filter with the gasket and torque it to spec. My setup has a separate upper coolant housing, so install the gasket and torque it to spec. Install the two cam position sensors and torque them down. Since this is going into a car that's case swapped, I'm installing a motor mount from a CRV. Take the motor mount and torque it to spec. Install the crank pulley but don't torque it down yet. Install the flywheel and torque all the bolts to the required spec. Put some high temp urea grease inside the crank and install the pilot bushing. Clean the friction surface of the flywheel and install the clutch pressure plate. Place the clutch in the correct orientation and align the dowels and then torque it down to spec. Next, install the intake manifold with the gasket and torque it down. Install the throttle body adapter if needed and the throttle body with the gasket and torque it down. Install the auto tensioner for the accessory belt and torque it down. My setup requires an EP3 style pulley, so install the pulley. Apply thread lubricant to the crank pulley bolt and torque it to the required spec. Now we install the alternator, thermostat housing with the gasket thermostat with the gasket, and heater pump with the o-ring. Torque down the bolt on the tab to keep it in place. Install the coolant piping to the thermostat and upper housing. Install and torque down the coolant temperature sensor. Install the starter, but don't torque it down until the transmission is in place. Install the new knock sensor and torque it down. Take the transmission and move it into place. Torque all the bolts around the bell housing to spec. Place some high temp urea grease on the spline on the half shaft. Tap it into place and torque down the bracket. Install the exhaust headers with the gasket and torque it to spec. Take the fuel rail, install the injectors, place the injectors into the ports, and torque it to spec. Torque the starter to the required spec. Orient your cams using the markings on the gears to top dead center on the cylinder you're working on. Take a feeler gauge, measure the valve lash, and adjust it if it's out of spec. Install the gasket to the valve cover, apply Honda Bond to the recommended surface, and torque down the cover in the recommended sequence. So there it is. Every step to building a motor in 8 minutes and a grand total of $11,561.90. I took some extra steps where there could have been cost savings, so I don't know if it was worth it yet. I do know that the car itself still needs a lot of work, and that if this engine ever blows up, you'll never hear from me again. I'm going to go up my contribution to my retirement account so I can at least retire by 90, but until then, thanks for watching.